Welcome to Management Decision Tools on Forecasting. In this section, we'll look at uh, how we actually uh, apply time series to analyze uh, data so as to achieve a forecast value of the future. So since we're talking about time series, what is time series? Well, time series, as its name implies, involves time. So uh, let's bring up the uh, writing pad and let's look at what is time series all right so time series we have a uh, variable let's just call it um, uh, stock price right so because uh, most people are familiar with stock price and the x-axis basically or roughly uh, basically must be time so it has to be time in order for it to be time series in time series, we don't look at time as continuous value, interestingly, right? We look at time as discrete intervals. So time one, we get, uh, well, let's just, you know, write down the time first. We have discrete times. So we only know about the values of the intended uh, business variable, such as the stock price X, at these time points okay so the way it goes the way we see time in time series is that we are at time t right we are right here and we know about the past forecast well, our past data. We have our past data here, um, everywhere along the axis. So on these points. So we have x here. Let me use uh, cross as a symbol for data, actual data that we get. That, that means actual stock price that we get from the market, from the stock market. All right, so like this. So at time t, we have at that point in time already received the stock markets data and of course because of our forecasting activities uh, prior to receiving the data prior I stress prior because um, oftentimes in terms of understanding is clear of course we, we need to forecast and then we receive the data right but uh, oftentimes when students perform calculations in the table form between forecast data and, and uh, actual data uh things tend to mess up so so you might end up using the forecast for the previous uh time point into the formula for the present forecast and that kind of mix-ups can happen so just keep in mind that the forecast comes a little before all right but i'm going to just draw it along the same vertical axis uh, but keep in mind that our forecast is always before, slightly before our receiving of the actual data. So um, basically, our forecasts tend not to be exactly on the X cross, right? So uh, we, we try our best. It's not too wrong, but it is also not uh, on it. Okay, so like this. Now, we have uh, two sets of data. One set is the green circles, our forecast, those are our own values. And the other set is the red cross, which is the actual data. Yeah. And the idea is, or rather for the for the forecasting formulas, the idea is how can we mix and slice okay, all these two sets of numbers so that we can come up with a uh, new green circle before uh, time t plus 1 arrives okay so this is t plus 1 and that is our future because we are here and this is now all right so let me say again that the entire idea about forecasting is to somehow all right combine and then come up with one number combine all these two sets of numbers the green circles and the red uh, axis into one number the forecast value 
right, just one number. And we would like this number to be, hopefully, at present moment, to be assessed as uh, the, the right thing. We hope that the data actually comes in on our forecasted position. That is the entire goal and purpose. We do not want errors. That will come in anyhow, but we don't want it in uh, at all in the first place. Okay, So our goal is very clear. We don't want to be approximately right. We want to, as much as our past data and forecast can tell us, get the next exposition. That is all we want to do at every time interval. Okay, and how to do it will be up to the formula and the algorithms. So, but the goal remains the same in all time series methods. So, as the slide say, says, we are trying to uh, predict right the next value t plus one using all values here as well as right as well as f one to f t. Right, so uh, we would want to calculate for this number f of t plus one how do we do that will depend on the algorithm that we choose so in this section we'll talk about five different uh, ways to do them and although there are five ways it's not that complicated and let me first categorize them for you right uh, in terms of the data pattern that they are able to handle or they assume a priori so for the first four methods they are all Averaging methods. Averaging methods, remember, uh, always take the posture, always have this built-in assumption into the formulas uh, that whenever data goes up, must come down sometime in the future so as to achieve that averaging level. Okay, So these four, uh, last value, averaging method, moving average, and exponential smoothing, they're all uh, averaging methods of some sort. The exponential with trend uh, is a interesting algorithm. It, it, it is a, a method that we use to forecast whenever the data series uh, adopt some sort of a rising you know pattern or dropping pattern and we have the enough enough external knowledge to make the assessment that what goes up stays up all right so or what goes down stays down so so that will be uh, one method that we will discuss in terms of trend data patterns. 